Hello and welcome. This video is about looking at Skylander figures in person. I will also be telling some facts as we go along about the characters in game and the figures themselves. I hope you enjoy. Did you know Aurora is the niece of Master Eon? He initially tried to keep her identity a secret, but as Aurora grew older, she wanted nothing more than to become a Skylander. So she trained his secret under the disguised name Boss Blades McSlashinator. Eventually, Eon found out and let Aurora become a sensei in his program. Eventually, he did admit that Boss Blades McSlashinator did sound pretty cool. However, Aurora could now use her real identity. Boom Bloom is a mutant plant who came as a result on Dr. Crankcase's experiment on plants using his mutation goo. A cool thing to note about the Boom Bloom figure, instead of the battle class symbol, she has the life symbol on her base, which is a clear design error. This could be many reasons, such as they initially were going to put the element symbols on the bases, or they weren't sure what battle class Boom Bloom should be, as she has a whip instead of ninja stars. Her catchphrase is rooting out evil. Did you know that Chompy Mage first appears in Skylanders Giants as a villain that you defeat in Willikan Village? Chompy Mage was actually raised by Chompies. Chompy Mage believes that everyone should embrace the Chompy way. He has tried to turn everyone in Skylands into a Chompy several times. When you place a hat on Chompy Mage in game, it's actually placed on top of his Chompy puppet instead. He has the same voice actor as the one and only Broccoli Guy. This is Ember. She was raised inside the Dragonfire Dojo. It was her father's dream that Ember would take over the family training facility. So Ember practiced in the art of dual blades every day. She was naturally gifted. Chaos took over a village and banned martial arts entirely as he feared an uprising. Ember fought back and defended her village and then joined the Skylanders. Did you know that Ember has a chase variant called December that was handed out to employees? In Trap Team, Golden Queen is a leader of the Doom Raiders. However, now Golden Queen has given up her life of crime to become a sensei of the Skylanders. As a villain in Trap Team, Golden Queen draws in nearby treasure. Golden Queen has the ability to turn things to gold just by touching them. This of course does not help her severe obsession with wealth and power, making her extremely evil. She reigns supreme. King Pen was taught his skill from a mysterious yeti master named Snow War. Snow War taught King Pen a combat style known as Flipper Foo. King Pen learned this while he was trapped in an avalanche. Once he escaped, he became an unstoppable force. Later, King Pen became the leader of the Skylander Senseis. Years later, King Pen returned to the site of the avalanche to thank his teacher, but no evidence of Snow War or the cave was ever found, leaving many to wonder if the Yeti had ever existed at all. Idepool was an undercover agent, however, she was betrayed by her superiors. Tidepaw was able to defeat this group and bring them to justice. Master Eon asked Tidepaw to join the Skylanders. In return, she requested that everyone in Skylanders Academy must undergo a truth test. Everyone passed with flying colours, except for Flynn, who insisted that he was 50% Mabu and 50% Enchilada Sauce. Tidepaw felt that he was 100% meathead. The Enchanted Elven Forest 
is an adventure pack in Skylanders Imaginators. When you go into this level, it appears to be Stealth Elf's original home, as Stealth, one of Stealth Elf's masters, Grandmaster Camouflage, meets her and tells her she has been experimenting on the local plants with a new fertilizer. This fertilizer mutated plants into vicious monsters which attack the elves, turning camouflage crazy, causing her to spread fires all around the trees to try and destroy them. Did you know that there's an unreleased air creation crystal called the Air Acon? This is similar to the Fire Angel and Earth Rune, as well as the Light Angel and Tech Pyramid, which weren't released. These elements have one less creation crystal released. It is not known why these figures weren't released. You are still able to put them into your game though, if you have the NSC code, which can be quite rare to find, as they are not widely shared with the community. This is the Fire Reactor Crystal, which was released in the starter packs for Imaginators. Did you know? that you're able to reset creation crystals by various methods. One which is well known and pretty funny is on the 3DS versions, you can place your creation crystal on the portal. I believe it's on the earlier games. Then Hugo will say there's an error in your figure and it needs resetting and you can actually reset all the data in it. There are other ways such as software that people have made to be able to reset them. These require a portal of power which is compatible in plugging into your computer. So unfortunately not the Xbox ones. Did you know that creation crystals come with stickers which you can use to place on your crystal to show what class that you have made that crystal into? They also took this a step further where you could order in your own NFC card with your Imaginator on the front and even more extreme, you're able to get your own custom Imaginator 3D printed. This is an official product by the way and that's really cool. If you place in the creation crystal of a new element on the portal you gain a new set for your Imaginator specific to that element. Did you also know that there is legendary creation crystals of certain types? This includes the legendary Magic Lantern, the legendary Light Fanged and the legendary Life Acorn. Did you know that the Life Element has the most creation crystals? This is four. When you place creation crystals on the portal of power, they glow. However, this still works if they're placed next to it and around it. So you can have a pretty cool light show of creation crystals, even though they're not loaded in game. This is the same as if you plug one portal of power in and place another portal of power next to it, they both glow up. You do not need to plug them both in for them to work. If you then place a figure on any of the portal of powers, I believe it might put it the figure in game, which is quite hilarious how that works. I've run out of facts to say about creation crystals, but if you have any to say, please tell me in the comments. I'd be very interested to know. In Skylanders Academy, the core Skylander team which consists of Jetvac, Spyro, Eruptor and Stealth Elf, are failing to defeat an enemy in a challenge. So, Master Eon gets the help of Master King Pen and gives them a creation crystal to create their own Imaginator. This Imaginator gets different parts from each of the Skylanders and can do his own abilities and also their abilities. He is called Psy. The Skylanders still fail the challenge, and then a real fire viper 
which is the enemy they're trying to defeat, actually turns up and they manage to beat it in the end. And the moral of the story is they need to work better as a team and let everyone do their own thing. Also in Skylanders Academy appears Kingpen is the creator of the creation crystals and he has been away developing them for the years that the Skylander Academy has been set up. There was going to be Imaginators too. I believe they would have been expanded the Imaginators you could create. I believe it was going to be possible to have Skylanders on mounts that had four legs. So that sounds pretty awesome. Astro Blast was on a secret mission in Troll territory while he stumbled upon a legendary Rift Engine. He was able to save the Rift Engine and bring it to the Skylander Academy where Eon made him a Skylander shortly afterwards. In game, Astro Blast uses his laser gun called the EZ-9000 or EZ-9000 the laser is able to bounce off walls and objects. The Sunrunner is Astro Blast's signature vehicle. It is a sky vehicle that comes in the sky racing pack. The Sunrunner is the only thing to do with the light element that appears in Skylanders Academy. Both Astro Blast and the Sunrunner have a legendary variant. The Sunrunner's special ability is that it can reveal the health bars of enemies, allowing you to target ones low on health and picking them off. The only other entity in Skylanders that can do this is Spyrise. Deep Dive Gil Grunt is a version of Gil Grunt, which he has a trident to jab his opponents with and is able to strike enemies with lightning. Gil Grunt can now use his jetpack to create ways which can be used to crash down on enemies. This is yet another standard figure of Gil Grunt that was released. He had a total of 4 series of figures and now they made him as a supercharger as well. He also has an Eon's Elite figure, I think they've overdone him just a bit. His signature vehicle is known as the Reef Ripper. The Reef Ripper has a special ability which zaps all enemies in a radius around it. It's a submarine that Gilgrunt uses to search for his long lost love, his mermaid girlfriend, who was kidnapped by pirates, so who knows what's happened to her, and he still never found her to this day. Maybe she ran off with a different version of his figure because there's so many of them. Poor Gil Grunt. Spitfire is a supercharger that came with most of the starter packs of the game. He's a flame spirit who is the leader of the superchargers. Spitfire was on pace to become the fastest driver in the Super Skylands racing circuit. Spitfire was on track to become the fastest driver in the Super Skylands racing circuit until he wasn't, quite literally. But he was illegally bumped off course by a goblin racer and sent flying into a canyon wall in a fiery explosion. Spitfire's signature vehicle is the Hot Streak, a car with the ability to give speed boosts. His car was made from the elemental magma rock and forged in the depths of the volcanic vault. When supercharged with Spitfire, the top speed of the car receives an enormous boost. It also has a flamethrower attached to the front, which you can use to absolutely obliterate other racers on the course. Most players only had access to this vehicle, could, so could only do land racing. Supershot Stealth Elf is the supercharger's counterpart of Stealth Elf. She has the highest handling of all drivers, which is set to the maximum value. Her soul gem allows her to summon her mini counterpart, Whisper Elf. 
She's able to still go invisible, but she can now place down turrets. And instead of being a melee based Skylander, she now has a, a ranged weapon. Her official catchphrase is said in a slightly different tone to the just the standard stealth elf figure. Her signature vehicle is the Stealth Stinger, a sky vehicle which shoots high velocity fawn rockets and is able to go invisible, it is definitely very stealthy and it's extremely powerful. A miniguns are able to deal rapid damage to enemies. While invisible, the vehicle heals itself. There is also a nitro version of the Stealth Stinger, as well as a dark version of Super Shot Stealth Elf. It is used in covert Skylander missions. Shark Shooter Terrafin is a supercharger's counterpart of Terrafin. Instead of being a melee focused Skylander, he is now a range focused Skylander, which completely changes up how you play as him. Shark Shooter is a play on words that sounds like Sharp Shooter. Another absolute classic play on words is his vehicle, the Shark Tank, which also is able to borrow under the ground like him. It is a land vehicle, which looks a bit more like a car than a tank unless it's supercharged. In Superchargers, the Sky Trophy unlocks two new maps in the Sky Racing. However, this requirement is removed in Imaginators, which is the same with all racing cups. You do not need them to play all the maps. However, in both Superchargers and Imaginators, you can play mirror and supervillain cups, as well as boss pursuits, if you own these cups. One of the sky villains is Wolfgang, which is why you can see his head on the cup. The C trophy is similar. Instead, it has Golden Queen's head on, as one of the maps you unlock is to do with Golden Queen, and she also is one of the villains. You can also do boss pursuits if you own these cups, which you unlock the villains to play as in superchargers, as well as their vehicles. The Sea Trophy was released in a pack with Deep Dive Gilgrunt and the Reef Ripper. There is also the Land Racing Trophy, which is much rarer and more expensive. The second lot of Eons Elites were released with superchargers, this type of Eons Elites had all their figures changed slightly. Most of them had better poses with cooler looking weapons. They don't appear to have the shiny finish like the Eons Elites from Trap Team. What I like about these Eon Elite figures is that their weapons are sparkly and shiny. What's cool about this Dino Rang figure it's actually his second one to be released as he got no other reposes other than the Eons Elite. This is the same for Eons Elite Ghost Rooster as he only had his Series 1 figure in Spyro's Adventure. The display cases came with a background on that was different depending on the element. They also came with their Eons Elite stat cards which have amazing stats on. Their weapons are no longer golden however but they do still come in the special packaging, which has an iridescent quality to it. It has some really cool silver reflectiveness to it with a stencil of the Skylander in the colour of its element. Boo Dude was one of my favourite characters from Spyro's Adventure, just because you can use his axe as a grappling hook. But now there's an awesome Eons Elite variant of him. I definitely went and got that. Also, Elite Voodoo looks pretty similar to the original figure, just that his axe looks way cooler because in the original, his axe usually bent a bit, which made it look a bit funny. But at least in this one, it's meant to look bent. And yeah, I just love grappling around the map with him. It's so satisfying and funny. He is definitely an odd looking figure. This is the legendary variant 
of Bushwhack. Bushwhack is a tree elf. Bushwhack was supposed to be a ranger. But as he was the smallest of his clan, he was sent into the woods to study with Arbo, who is known for helping the Skylanders rebuild the Core of Light in Spyro's adventure. And he was taught many secrets by Arbo, and he was gifted an enchanted axe by Arbo, which is, of course, made of Traptanium. In his Soul Gem ability, he topples a tree down on his opponents. Gearshift is an awesome trap master who is able to literally shift her gear into different modes to attack enemies. Gearshift is definitely a play on words as it is something that is commonly used in the car. Gearshift is a robot and believe it or not she is royalty on a tech island of Metallina. In my opinion her ranged attack, which also drops gears on the ground, is her most powerful ability. Gusts and glory with Gusto. On the wiki, it says he's a large humanoid. Basically, he's a massive fat man who can suck in his enemies and eat them and jiggle them around his, in his massive belly. He's also able to blow out torrential winds. He can also literally swallow his Traptanium boomerang, his stomach's that big, and then spit it out to deal loads of damage. Gusto is the number one sexy Skylander, and that is a fact. Just look at his massive belly wobble and you'll agree. Head Rush is a trap master which has yodel attacks in game which literally make your enemies ears bleed as well as your own. It's very deadly. She can also do massive stomps. Basically, she has tree trunks for legs and can stomp on anything. She also has Traptanium horns, which allow her to rush in head first, stabbing her enemies with her horns. Her official catchphrase is taking charge. This is also because she's a good leader. Jawbreaker was from a race of robots that operated and maintained a vast underground complex of enormous machines that powered the legendary Skytrain. One day, trolls invaded and wanted to take over the Skytrain for their own evil use. Jawbreaker quickly jumped into action and used his massive fists to beat the trolls into retreat. He was then made part of the trap team where he now uses his traptanium powered fists to break the jaws of all evildoers. The first appearance of the light element was in trap team. Nightlight was the first ever light element Skylander to be designed. He was meant to be set around the theme of light speed. Nightlight was introduced with the Sunscraper Spire expansion pack, but then later came in, in a single pack as well. Before the destruction of the Core of Light, Nightlight was left stranded in the Light Realm. But when it was destroyed, he was let free. He managed to defeat Luminous and imprison him in Sunscraper Spire. Crypt King is a trap master, but was originally meant to be a giant, and I believe he was found in the game files to be named as Chop Chop's Dad. Of course, Iroh took the role of being the undead giant, so eventually he was altered and put into Trap Team. Crypt King is a disembodied spirit of a knight and found his way into an ancient Archean weapon vault where he found this suit of armour and made it his own. His catchphrase is I've got the edge. This is Winterfest Lobstar, an in-game variant of Lobstar. Lobstar was the head chef of his own five-star restaurant, often cooking for the kingfish himself. A giant leviathan 
threaten to swallow up Lobstar's guests and capture the kingfish himself. Lobstar defeated the Leviathan and was made a Skylander. In game, Lobstar builds up steam in order to do lightning fast attacks. In this case, I would avoid cooking this lobster as I don't think it would kill him, but just make him angry. Nightmare is a dark trap master and was initially released in Midnight Museum. Before the destruction of the Core of Light, she was left stranded in the Dark Realm. Nightmare was one of the dark centaurs who guarded the Oracle of Stones, an enchanted game of dark sky stones that could predict the future. It was stolen by an unknown evil, but she was able to retrieve it, and then she signed up and joined the trap team. Snapshot is a blue water crocagator who is the leader of the trap team. He's available in the console starter packs along with Food Fight. Snapshot was actually called Croc Shot in beginning of development. He actually learned his archery skills with elves and his hunting skills from wolves. Soon he became the most revered monster hunter in all of Skylands and so was recruited by Eon. Wildfire was once a young lion of the Fireclaw clan, but he was an outcast as he was gold. He wasn't allowed to enter the Rite of Infernos, a test of survival in a treacherous fire plains. Even though he was an outcast and not allowed to particip participate, he still did. The shield that Wildfire carries is his father's enchanted shield. His father's shield magically changed him, magnifying the strength that already was in his heart, making him the mightiest of his clan. Batspin is one of the Frito Lay Skylanders, a Skylander which was part of a naming competition for picking a new Skylander for Skylanders Trap Team. These Skylanders were given names and backstories created by fans. High Five was the winner of the Frito-Lay contest. However, they decided to just add them all into Trap Team anyway. Batspin is able to shoot bats at enemies which do initial damage, but then they're able to follow them around chomping on them. Blaze is a blue dragon knight. He was released with the Nightmare Express Adventure Pack and in a triple pack with Torch and Tidal Wave Gilgrunt. Blades came from a long line of dragons that guarded the dungeons of Scalo's castle where the Golden Fear Serpent had slumbered for a century. The serpent awoke one day. Blades was able to defeat the serpent with his bravery. When Master Eon learnt of this, he was recruited to become a Skylander. In Trap Team, the first type of Eon's elite figures were released. These figures looked the same as their Series 1 figure, except they had a shiny coating, a golden weapon, as well as a gold base with a white plastic bottom. They came with a display case in a box which was beautifully decorated with a stencil the colour of their element, as well as lovely iridescent silver material. In this game, Eon's elites are so incredibly powerful. They have so much health and do so much damage. Originally, Chopper started out as a tech giant. However, it was hard to actually fit a T-Rex onto the portal of other toys as it was so long, as well as it couldn't really fit in packaging. So instead they ended up with Bouncer as the tech giant. So in the development of Trap Team they made Chopper as small and stubby as possible. They came up with a T-Rex with a helicopter, mecha suit legs and missiles. This is Legendary Deja Vu, a variant of Deja Vu, 
It was released in the Mirror of Mystery Adventure Pack. Deja Vu is one of my favourite characters of all time. You are able to make a magic twin which comes from a few seconds in the past which repeats the actions that your Skylander does. So you're able to place these magic black holes which do huge amounts of damage and stack them up from your past self to do loads of damage, obliterating everything. Flitrek is one of the Frito-Lay competition Skylanders. Most of the dolphins of Bottlenose Bay spent their days playing in the waves. However, Flitrek was different. One day, he came across a massive Ice Viking ship that was still intact. Suddenly, a huge crew of Ice Vikings burst out from inside and began leading an attack on the unarmed dolphin residents. Litrek quickly fastened together armour, shield and a sword. Using nearby pieces of nearby shipwrecks, he then single-handedly defeated the Ice Vikings. Food Fight is a sentient artichoke. Food Fight is the byproduct of a troll food experiment gone wrong. The Troll Farmers Guild attempted to fertilise their soil with gunpowder. They got more than the super snack. They got an all-out food fight. This is quite questionable. What do trolls put in their gunpowder? It's probably radioactive and toxic knowing them and definitely contains severe mutagens. Food Fight defended asparagus people from being wrapped in bacon and eaten by garden gnomes. Bunnybone once lived on Punchline Island, the funniest place in the land of the undead, and the home of the eternal chuckling trees that magically make everyone laugh when the breeze tickles them. After hearing stories of this, the evil cow Moneybone sent his minions to investigate if the magic could be used to make a funny bomb that would render Skylands helpless with laughter. Bunnybone of course stopped this and became a Skylander. His catchphrase is, I've got a bone to pick. This is Full Blast Jetvac, the Series 3 variant of Jetvac. The Series 3 Wow Pal gives him a double barrel. While flying, you can swap the Vac Blaster for two super-powered guns, and then fire continuously until they overheat to do massive amounts of damage. This figure has a different colour scheme to the normal Jetvac figures, which were blue before. Also, Jetvac appears in Skylanders Academy, and is an absolute character. This is Love Potion Pop Fizz, an in-game variant of Series 3 Pop Fizz, also known as Fizzy Frenzy Pop Fizz. The Soul Gem ability of this figure allows you to drink a potion and drink even more potions to go into a massive version of Pop Fizz which does even more damage. It is quite slow. But what's even more significant, when you first put the figure on the portal, it also spawns as a huge version of Pop Fizz, as if you've already drunk this potion. Remember how I said Eon's Elite characters were extremely powerful in Trap Team? Well, not only that, they were automatically max level and already had some money in them, so you could buy upgrades. They deal massive amounts of damage, and ones like Chop Chop and Stealth Health are able to get health back, so they just never died, as they could heal faster than they were taking damage, and the damage that they did took meant nothing to their health bar. Also, Eon's Elite Stealth Health is the best by far. You can't change my mind by. In Skylander's Trap Team, minis became fully playable characters, rather than just sidekicks which followed you around. Also in Trap Team, they sold minis on a larger scale. This mini genie figure was also available as a Skylander's giant sidekick. 
However, in Trap Team they released the mini double packs and Mini Genie was in the pack with Spry. There is some very expensive mini figures. An example is Breeze, who costs £140 to date, which is just a mini version of Whirlwind. The reason why I w wanted to get the Spry figure is because Baby Spyro actually features in Skylanders Academy, and it's really cool to have him. Also, Ninjini was one of my favourite characters when I was a kid. Within the Skylands, there is in fact an alternate reality known as Skylands Miniverse. Everything there is smaller, including the Skylanders. The Skylanders' sidekicks come from that Miniverse and they have travelled to the Skylands to meet their regular sized alter egos and tag along with them on adventures. This is Blast Zone, the first swapper we've encountered in this video. Swap Force basically is a team of Skylanders which can swap their upper and lower bodies and change them into multiple combinations. The explanation behind this is basically Cassandra exploded this magical volcano on them which gave them this ability. Blast Zone was available in starter packs for consoles. In Swap Force, there is these things called Swap Zones. As you can see at the bottom of the figure, there is this special symbol. On Blast Zone, it looks like a rocket. Basically, Swap Zones were special challenges which required different powers that depended on the bottom of the swapper. This is Dark Blast Zone, who came from the Dark Starter Pack for Swap Force. Did you know that there was dark starter packs for Swap Force that came with quite a lot more figures, another poster, as well as of course being more expensive? I'm lucky my parents bought it for me. This is Firecracker. He has the special ability which enables him to go into the bounce swap zones. Basically what these swap zones are is you bounce off little islands which are for some reason bouncy and the aim is to get to the end and pop the chaos balloons. Now this is quite funny because you can land on chaos's big head and pop his balloon. By the way I mean an air balloon. You get rewards for doing swap challenges such as hats, bonus missions and legendary treasures. This is Legendary Free Ranger. I believe legendaries in my country are a Toys R Us exclusive. So I got this bad boy from Toys R Us. Free Ranger has the spin ability. Basically the spin swap zones are like you're in this giant pinball machine and you're constantly bouncing off barriers and you're just trying to get into the center, I believe, to destroy, I think it's a golden chaos statues at the end of each level and you're just trying to destroy that. We can't let things like that exist in the world. Basically, legendary variants have slightly better stats over their normal variants. Plus, they look quite a lot cooler in most cases. The reason why legendaries are golden and black, they are said to be statues of heroic Skylanders, which are legendary in status, that have come to life to defend Skylands. This is Gorilla Driller. He has the dig ability. Basically, in the dig zone, you go into this underground cave and you're in the dark. You have to dodge lots of obstacles like minecarts on tracks which is speeding past and the whole aim of it is you need to dig these blue diamonds up I think it's free and you have a time limit to do it now you do get unlimited tries on the swap zone so if you die your Skylander can retry as many times as, as you like this is Hoot Loop and Hoot Loop has a special variant called Enchanted Hoop Loop 
and enchanted figures change color in game. I believe Hoot Loop it might be blue, it changes his feathers to blue back to white, but this is to reflect the real life properties on them. In real life, if you leave them out in the sun for long enough, they actually change color. The only other figure with this was Enchanted, Light Course Star Strike. This is Legendary Night Shift, the better version of Night Shift. Now Night Shift is said to be extremely overpowered if you're doing a nightmare run. And that's because his bottom path gives him two extra lives. If he dies, he revives himself in a coffin and comes back to life. And he can do this two times. So basically, he has three lives. This makes Night Shift's bottom really, really powerful. You could even combine his bottom with your favorite top. The legend of Rattleshake was immortalized when he found himself trapped by the Black Cat Gang. They were literally cowboys, as they were large cows. They threatened to plunder the local village unless Rattleshake led them inside the magical volcano Mount Cloudbreak, where they hoped to discover enchanted treasure. Rattleshake magically summoned every snake in the area and took out the Black Hat Gang. His catchphrase is Go ahead, snake my day. Spyrise is a really special character. In game, he can use an ability which literally makes him disappear off screen. He's able to be invincible to everything and he can land wherever he wants from the sky. Basically, he shoots this weird laser spider lev web which makes him levitate and fly into the sky and he can launch himself back down when it's safe. This makes boss fights extremely easy as Spy Rise, as he can just dodge all the attacks and stay in the air. Did you know that Stink Bomb has the same voice actor as SpongeBob? This is Tom Kenny. Stink Bomb has the sneak ability. In the sneak zones, you go into this fortress and you need to click this button to make it self-destruct and then you basically need to dip, dodge loads of security systems which have cameras but you are able to go invisible so they can't see you. This is Washbuckler, a pirate which has eight legs and no pegs. He comes in the console starter packs. His swap force ability is climb. Basically, in a climb zone, you go up this big long wall and you have to dodge obstacles as you go up. There could be falling acorns, there could be falling trains, there could be explosive barrels. It depends on the difficulty of the zone. But your goal is to reach the top to get to the prize. Did you know when you put a hat on Washbuckler, it takes off his pirate hat and he says the quote, where does my pirate hat go? And the hat you actually put on replaces the pirate hat, which is quite funny. I can't remember if he says anything like, ah, there's my pirate hat, but I'll have to look into that. That's quite funny. Arc Washbuckler comes with the Dark Edition starter pack. And this, I believe, is the first figure I put on the portal when I played Swap Force for the very first time. 